Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to HemingwayLand.com, your source, quality, affordable land, this time in the state of Colorado. Yes, people, we are back this week in the Rocky Mountain State with some new properties in a subdivision we have listed in previously. Very popular subdivision. We listed one property out there last July. It sold in a day, and then I got a deluge of emails and phone calls about when will you have more, I so meant to purchase that one, etc., etc. Well, finally, a few months later, we have some more parcels out here. In fact, we have not one, not two, but three. And of course, because we're going to be discussing three properties in this one video, this video will be more about the subdivision, more about the region in which all of these properties are in. It will be posted on each of their respective listing pages. And should you be interested in land in this region, I would encourage you guys to better compare and contrast the individual parcels. Obviously, we've got our property specific notes on each one of these pages. It will enumerate whatever differences exist between the lots. And of course, we've got photos at the bottom of the page, which are from the individual parcels. Yes, photos from the individual parcels. So that will help you, of course, better compare and contrast based on surroundings, footprint, neighbors, whatever is your interest. Uh, should be noted, of course, guys, that as you can see from the headline, all of these are in a region where the properties have been pre-staked. There are boundary markers out there. There's power throughout the subdivision. There's underground utilities in parts of the subdivision. There is no HOA, no covenants, no restrictions. And the big selling point, of course, is that they're all very close to the Alamosa River. That, of course, means that you are with walking distance, mere walking distance of fishing and general water-based recreation. We'll just put it that way. Anyway, with all that said, guys, I will intro at least one of these properties in this video. The one I'm looking at right now is CJCO-1077, located in the Alamosa River Estates in, I forgot to mention this, but in Canejos County in the southern portion of Colorado. This one's a one-acre lot. The acreage and hence the price point on all these will differ, so please see the respective listing pages. Whatever the case, guys, this one acre is priced at $15,000. Now, with all of that said, let's pull these up on a map, show you exactly where these are. As with all of our listings, we've got GPS coordinates. You know the drill, guys. Four corner points in the center. Click any one of them, and voila, Google Maps shall appear. So this for the uninformed is the state of Colorado. This giant square here on Google Maps, which you probably can't read very well on the YouTube video, but we're looking at Colorado. Subject properties are down here in the southern portion of the state. Everybody knows Denver. These properties are nowhere close to Denver. Denver, of course, is up here, roughly about 236 miles north. And then here along the I-25, of course, you got Colorado Springs and Pueblo, Colorado. These properties, however, sit down here in Canejos County in the southern portion of the state, really bordering northern New Mexico. Ergo, ergo, people, they're a little bit closer to Taos, New Mexico, and all the fantastic skiing that is down there. Of course, all these properties are located in Canejos County, which is in the San Luis Valley, the beautiful picturesque San Luis Valley down here in Southern Colorado. Lot to do, lot to see, a lot of outdoor attractions. I will zoom in on the map, guys, just a little bit to show you that here's the subdivision, but very close to the subdivision is, if we go down here, the Lahara Reservoir right here. We've got the Terrace Reservoir up here. And of course, also nearby, just uh, north northeast of the subject properties is the Great Sand Dunes National Park over in this region, Zapata Falls, so on and so forth. And of course, as you can see from all the green that's on the map, uh, a lot of hunting out here, Rio Grande National Forest, really right in the backyard of these properties. So anything with four legs out here in Colorado, you can get a permit to shoot it. Uh, elk, mule deer, wild turkey, those are those are some of the uh, the popular species out here. But of course, I'm sure there's many more. Anyway, so as I was noting, guys, the subject properties are down here in the Alamosa River Estate Subdivision. It is, if we kind of, well, let me see here, let's go to satellite view. If we zoom in on the map, you can kind of see the carved out region that is this subdivision. Yes, it is this area right here. Took a while to find it, but there you go. Uh, in regards to nearby towns, of course, these are pretty close to Capulin over here and to Lahara over here. Of course, if you zoom in on the map, what you're going to see from satellite view is that neither one of these towns are very big towns. They've got a, they got a church, they got a school, they got a post office, they got a gas station, not much else. If you're talking about uh, going into town for groceries, supplies, things like that, of course, that can be found up here in nearby Alamosa, roughly about 30 minutes north northeast along Highway 285. Uh, of course, we've got photos, so for the uninitiated guys, Alamosa, beautiful, Alamosa, Colorado, it's a town of roughly 9,500 people. 
up here is where you're going to find all your sort of uh, major services, uh, such as, uh, there we go, major medical center, the San Luis Valley Health Hospital here in nearby Alamosa. Additionally, of course, banks and post offices, dental clinics, churches, Walmart, they've got the Walmart, they don't have a Home Depot, they've got a tractor supply store, they've got an Ace Hardware out there. Point being, guys, if you're saying, I'm going to develop this property, where do I go for my building supplies? You're going to be going into nearby Alamosa. Of course, grocery stores out here, and a uh, happening, a thriving downtown with uh, bars and nightlife. Bars and nightlife, guys. We'll get back to this photo in just a second. This, of course, is the Great Sand Dunes National Park, which is one of the many attractions that are out here, which I had uh, enumerated earlier. All right, guys, let's zoom in on the subdivision once more and talk about this. So the Alamos River Estate subdivision is uh, kind of a small sub, only a couple hundred parcels out here, but it's in this region, just sort of along the banks of the Alamosa River. You got properties that are a little bit closer that border the banks of the river. We've got one of those in inventory. And then there are properties sort of on the outskirts of the river, but still within very close walking distance of the river. And that's where some of our properties are located today. Let me go back here to the photo gallery and just kind of show you what one of these look like. Uh, and this is going to give you an excellent sense of the region. So first off, should be noted, excuse me, these properties are, uh, the. so we've got two properties out here on High Plains Road, which is why I'm focusing on, uh, on this listing page right now. Uh, whatever the case, like most of the roads in the region, uh, pretty well maintained. You might want to take a larger truck or off-road capable vehicle out here, but pretty easy to access all these lots. Nothing too rocky, nothing too hilly, uh, et cetera. Uh, additionally, there's power not really throughout the entirety of the subdivision. I don't want to give you the impression that, that power snakes up and down each road out here, but uh, it's all of them are, are very close to, if not on the subject properties. You'll have to look at the respective listing pages to know which is which. This particular property I'm looking at, it's got power roughly about 400 feet down the road. Uh, nonetheless, again, it is all throughout the subdivision in various places, so likely not difficult to get extended out to the subject property if you do choose to uh, hook up to the grid. Additionally, guys, you can kind of see a property boundary marker in this photo. You'll see more throughout these respective galleries. Uh, all of these properties have been staked out there, not by our company, but when they were initially surveyed. And these are some pretty good pins that they've got on the ground. Sometimes these property boundary markers are like a popsicle stick that somebody stuck in there in the 1960s and somehow is stuck around to this day. These, however, are hard metal spikes. So you're going to be able to uh, very easily determine the, uh, the boundaries of your property, which, of course, is going to save you some money on a survey. Uh, additionally, as we go through these, you can see some of the nearby developed home sites. Now, this is important, and I'm pointing out kind of the difference in some of these home sites uh, that you can see here. You see trailers, you see some nice built-up houses. This one actually, I think, is in a different sub. It's just on the other side of, of this subdivision. But anyway, uh, you can see some trailers. You can see some people got school buses parked out here, things like that. We've actually got some other photos from the last property that we listed out here of some homes in this region. Um, this one, more of a log cabin design. This one, it's a, what is this, like a railroad car or something like that. Showing you all these guys, because as I mentioned at the outset of the video, this is a region that does not have covenants or restrictions. And because of that, there's a lot more freedom, a lot more independence uh, that you'll have afforded to you as to what you develop, what you build out here on the land. So if you want to build something really nice, or if you just want to park a mobile home out here, or do what this guy's doing, whatever exactly this guy's doing, I'm not certain. Uh, but you'll have the option to do that. Now, of course, sometimes that means your neighbors, you know, have lots that look like this, and sometimes they have lots that look like this, okay? So, uh, but the point being is that you don't have an HOA out here. You don't have any sort of governing body telling you what you can and cannot do or how to develop the land. This, of course, also means that you'll be able to develop the property if you elect uh, with a tiny home, shipping container home, uh, the sort of unconventional structures that are difficult to get permitted elsewhere. Additionally, as you can see from the photos, guys, this is some um, pretty flat, easy to build on property, easy to build on, easy to park on. Uh, it's not going to require a lot of work to start kind of constructing out here. Spooky trees, guys, spooky trees. Also, should be noted, guys, at the bottom of each of these photo galleries, of course, we've got the drone overlays to give you a sense of the exact size, shape, location, and footprint of the property. We've got the plat maps here in the photo gallery as well, but we always like to do this. This one, of course, also gives you a sense of the neighbors that we just showed you, exactly how far, how close they are to the subject property, the power, 
et cetera, et cetera. So I will let you guys go through these. Additionally, at the bottom of the gallery, we're also going to have, as always, guys, drone video will be posted down here. Uh, drone video of the subdivision just to, again, give you a better sense of what the region is like. Now, with all that said, guys, I do want to direct your attention up top here. This is normally the part of the video where we talk about uh, zoning, where we talk about covenants and restrictions. Uh, this, again, as I've already discussed, is one of these subdivisions. It doesn't have any CCRs, covenants, conditions, and restrictions. If you come down here, we got a PDF, and if you click on this, it's going to bring up this thing. This was originally drafted. These were covenants that were originally drafted back in the 60s when the subdivision was created. And uh, you may be saying, hey, Hemingway, you just told me it doesn't have any covenants and restrictions. Well, here's the deal, people. If you scroll down here to point number 12, these covenants and restrictions are to run with the land and shall be binding, blah, 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 said properties for a period of 25 years from the date of these covenants are required, et cetera. So the point is that all of these covenants basically expire, expired in the mid-90s, which means the few rules and restrictions that existed with the property at the outset when the subdivision was first created uh, are no longer enforceable. So uh, that's why you will see the various types of home sites that we showed you in the um, you know in the photo gallery that have been developed out there uh, simply because there are no rules. People have had more independence to build whatever they like within this region. Now, additionally, guys, I also want to point out here within the uh, property-specific notes, and of course we have this down at the bottom of the page as well, uh, contacts for utilities, San Luis Valley Rural Electric Co-op is the utility company that services this region. If you want to reach out to them, well, first off, click this, it'll bring up their website. But if you want to reach out to them and discuss, hey, I'm buying some land, it's in a subdivision, you've got power pretty close to my property or at my property boundary, uh, I want to get hooked up to the grid, what's this going to cost me, you know, uh, you know, maybe you have to extend some poles, run some cable, I don't know, but please give me a sense what is this going to cost me? What are the logistics involved? That, of course, is always a good question to ask before you spend X thousands of dollars on a parcel of land. Uh, so we like to help you with that research, number one. And number two, guys, also within the table, we've got a link here to the Colorado Division of Water Resources website. Uh, of course, these are all properties within a region that does not have city utilities. So if you're going to get water to the property, you are likely going to be doing it with a well. Whatever the case, if you click on that link right there, it will take you to... The Division of Water Resources website. Each state, or at least each state out west, I guess, has a website like this. The one in New Mexico is not the easiest one uh, to, uh, to navigate their website, but the Colorado website is very easy to navigate and makes it very easy to learn information about the region. And I like to point this out in our Colorado videos, that if you go to the website, click on the Well Permit Map Viewer, it's going to bring up the state of Colorado slowly. Now, if you want to see what wells are drilled at, drill depth, because we get this question a lot here on the phones and in emails, and my answer is I was like, I don't know. I don't even want to guess. Call a well driller, okay? Anyway, if you zoom in down here on the map to Conejos County, uh, this will be a little bit difficult to find, but up here is Capulin. If you just find Capulin, you see the Alamosa River snaking through this region. This right here is the subdivision. Zoom down here. And then you click Well Application and Final Permit, and on the map will appear some green dots of developed home sites in the region that have wells. Now, we've got some property up here in this region. The one that I'm showing you uh, within this video is here along High Plains. Despite the number of developed home sites that we saw here along High Plains, I don't see any wells drilled within this region. That's peculiar. Uh, this is the closest one. If we click on this, you can see the well depth over here is about 60 this, of course, should not be a giant shock, uh, being as there's a, a river right here. You would think that, you know, the water table should be pretty accessible. 60 doesn't seem like, you know, too far to drill. And if we look at some of the ones on this side, here's one at 46, here's one at 80. Uh, there's more developed home sites really over in this little section. Actually, let me bring it up on the map. I'll show you guys. Yeah, over here, you can see more of these developed home sites. Uh, I think that uh, that uh, railroad car that I was showing you guys in the photo gallery is over here. That larger house is over here. Uh, anyway, within the uh, within the permit viewer here, you can see the well depth that all of these wells are drilled at. And at the very least, it should suggest to you that the water table is pretty accessible, whether you're buying land over here or land over here or land over here. I'd like to point out, guys, that there's two green dots uh, over here. These are not within the subdivision. These are on the other side of the sub. This one was drilled at 500 feet, and this one is drilled at 600 feet. I think the, uh, the nicer photo that we had seen in the gallery of that um, home site, this one, I think that's the one with a well that's at 500 or 600 feet, something like that. So anyway, uh, things to be aware of. Point being, guys, you could do some research that way. Or as always, you can reach out to local well drillers in the region 
who are infinitely more knowledgeable on this topic than I am. One of the many topics that I am not very knowledgeable on. Anyway, guys, if you are interested in purchasing this property, it should be noted that we closed on this with uh, Menke Abstract. So we did get title insurance, which means we will be providing a warranty deed to you, the buyer. Come up here, click the Buy Now button on any one of these listing pages, and it will take you to a secure checkout where we will ask for people, let me stress this, a non-refundable non-refundable earnest money deposit of $500. That sort of kicks off the process. Uh, when we get into properties within this price range, we recommend to our buyers, you should get title insurance. You should close through a title company. If you don't want to, that's fine. That's just our recommendation. We go where you go. You know, he with the gold makes the rules. Uh, so if you're buying the property, we'll do whatever you want. But we recommend closing through a title company. And we like to begin that process with you filling out this form Agreeing to the terms of service, clicking next, and on the very next page, you can enter credit or debit card information to place that $500 non-refundable earnest money deposit. And uh, the way that this works, guys, we've got on the page here these uh, notes on purchasing. If you'd like to learn more about this process, click these links, follow some of these links around the website, and you can see some various pages that we have on this process. Buying from us is one of the pages that we have, how it works, buying from us. And that will kind of enumerate the way that this process works. Uh, whether you want to pay cash like this or if you want to close for a title company. Again, the one that we recommend is title company and you place the earnest money deposit. Step one. Step two is we draft a contract. Step three is we open escrow. And then Menke, presumably Menke abstract, will uh, will do the rest. And that's about a 30 or 45 day process sometimes. Sometimes they get it done a little bit quicker, but I always like to prepare buyers for it's going to be about a month, something like that. So... Um, should be noted, guys, that if you are saying, hey, guy on the internet, I don't want to agree to give you money until I see what kind of contract I'm signing. Helpfully, guys, we've got a link here for the generic standard sale and purchase agreement that we use. It's a generic version of the contract. Of course, you can read through this. You can see it's a pretty, uh, pretty reasonable one-page, one-page for signatures type of contract. Uh, self-explanatory was the adjective I was looking for. A pretty self-explanatory contract. And uh, that's what we'll be asking you to sign. Of course, the title company doesn't do anything until they have a contract between buyer and seller demonstrating intent. And we do not draft such a contract until we have $500. So that's what I mean when I say that kind of kicks off the process. Anyway, guys, if you have more questions about the process, if I went too fast, if you haven't done this before, if you are from a foreign country... Come down here, title escrow, frequently asked questions. This is another good page that you can review on the website. This really goes into what the title escrow process likes. And I think kind of sets your expectations accordingly for how much things are going to cost, how long things are going to take, what are the benefits, what are potential drawbacks of this type of transaction, how exactly it works. I live in Omaha. Do I have to fly to Colorado and do this personally? Or can I do it from the comfort of my own home? Things like that are what are addressed on this page. So give that a read and you will learn more. With all that said, guys, as noted, we got three of these out here. Also, as noted, they sold really fast last time. And, you know, as you can imagine, close to the river, no covenants, no restrictions, no HOA. Uh, build whatever you want, do whatever you want. Those are big selling points with all of our buyers. So, of course, if you are interested in this property, I would encourage you to act sooner rather than later. With all that said, guys, thanks as always for your attention spans, and we will see you in the next video.